And and you made it back. I see, I see you brought back at least one of the youth that were on the trip. That's it. Oh, where is he? Oh, there, oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, he got two. I didn't see Will. I was looking for him. I didn't see him. You guys left Corbin there. Oh, that's just so wrong. And I guess he liked it feeling that way so, so much that he stayed. He stayed. <laughs> okay. All right. That's how I feel sometimes. But all right. So, um, yeah, that's okay. No, just we know you want the attention. We understand. The next, uh, oh, February 5th. So that's this week. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And, and Pastor Tom's going to lead it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. Okay, so so uh, youth group five o'clock, uh, February fifth, six thirty to eight. Uh, uh, what what's the ages again? Remind. Oh, there it is. Grade six and up. So you know anybody in grade six or up? Send them out. Uh, got a pretty good, uh, healthy youth group there, and uh, uh, come on in and enjoy it. Uh, okay, here we go. So we're gonna have confirmation classes starting February twenty first at six p.m. And then Bible study will be at 7 p.m. So confirmation classes are for uh, any youth or uh, anybody that has not um, joined the church yet. It's their opportunity to, to learn about Jesus, learn about the Methodist church, and to decide if they want to make a commitment or not. So that'll be February 21st at 6. We're going to have four classes all together. So it'll be Wednesdays at 6. Then we go to uh, our mission collection for February. It's February. Did you guys know like a whole month of 24 is gone already? I, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I just woke up and it was February. And uh, so uh, we're going to support the High Silver Food Pantry. The money's going to be going for that. Then um, our Super Bowl Sunday. So the collection is February 11th, the final collection, or the collect, how, how can I say that? I put final collection, does that make sense? Or... Yeah. It's also the first collection? Well, I don't know, I mentioned it last week when you guys weren't here. Pursue, but not the final collection for the mission. Okay. Gotcha, so bring your cans of soup in on the 11th, which is, is that next week already? I don't even have a watch. Okay, so next week, uh, bring a can of soup in if you can. And 
Cluster Hymsing is tonight at Delmont at 6 p.m. Hope to see you there. Uh, otherwise, I get lonely. So come on out. Um, and uh, let's sing some praises together. And uh, Women's Breakfast uh, was a reschedule for February 17th, 9 a.m. in Suey Hall, February 17th, 9 a.m. Uh, all women are welcome to attend and encouraged to bring a breakfast treat. Um, and Johnny Ann will be the speaker. So that should be a really great, uh, really good time. And Johnny Ann's been through a lot and the Lord has brought her through it. And you might want to hear what, you know, how she got through. So uh, what was the next one, Jim? Uh, pancake dinner is uh, Shrove Tuesday. We're going to have a pancake dinner at Bell Plain. Um, I was supposed to have a meeting on Tuesday. That meeting was canceled. So uh, I'll get you more details. <laughs> but it's the 13th. So could you believe like Lent is going to start on Valentine's Day? Lent, Lent is the beginning of Valentine's Ash Wednesday is Valentine's Day. That's crazy. So early this year. That means that means a cold sunrise service. <laughs> so uh, United Methodist Women, uh, United Women in Faith, uh, they're going to meet uh, every fourth Thursday. So the next meeting is the 22nd. It's at 6 p.m. in Suey Hall. And uh, just some reminders. Choir practice is 845 every Sunday. Uh, if you uh, we could you can leave donations for food back there in Suey Hall as well. So if you have can tabs, uh, soda can tab, soup can tab, but whatever can tab, put them. Uh, we have a collection point in the back of the church there for Ronald McDonald House. There's prayer requests, uh, books in the pew. If you want to write that down, you can put it in the. Uh, you write down your prayer request, place it in the offering plate, and the usher will get them to me that way. And um, sign up sheets on the back wall, in the hallway, on the left, on my left on the right as you come in okay then uh a new one we just approved this 30 seconds ago uh there will be a, a board game night uh, this is already an established group uh that does it in four other churches right jim three other churches okay so we'll be the fourth uh it'll be every second friday of the month and you can bring your own board game and everybody is welcome and it's uh so that'll start february 9th so that's this week. Okay, see, we, we're getting things moving. We're going to approve it and just start it that week. I don't know. All right. And any other announcements that we need to make? All right. Wow. Okay. So if you're able, please stand and join me in a call to worship. How wonderful it is to sing our praises to God. You could do it anime, I know. I, it's hard sometimes when you're doing so much in the church, but God's mercy is given generously to all in need. Come, worship and celebrate. God is reaching out to you this day. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. So love lifted me. Uh, you got to find this color book and uh, the praise book in your pew.
our opening prayer. Let us pray together. Powerful God, from the very beginning, you blessed creation. You have loved and shielded your people through all the joys and trials of life. We come to you to say, rejoicing. spirit today so uh well are, are you ready to read 
All right, thank you, brother. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31, found on page 852 in your pew Bibles. God rules the whole earth. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? Isn't it clear that God created the world? God is the one who rules the whole earth, and we that live here are merely insects. He spread out the heavens like a curtain or an open tent. God brings down rulers and turns them into nothing. They are like flowers, freshly sprung up and starting to grow. But when God blows on them, they wilt and are carried off like a straw in a storm. The holy God asks, who compares with me? Is anyone my equal? Look at the evening sky. Who created the stars? Who gave them each a name? Who leads them like an army? The Lord is so powerful that none of the stars are ever missing. You people of Israel say, God pays no attention to us. He doesn't care if we are treated unjustly. But how can you say that? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the eternal God, creator of the earth. He never gets weary or tired. His wisdom cannot be measured. The Lord gives strength to those who are weary. Even young people get tired, then stumble and fall. But those who trust the Lord will find new strength. They will be like strong eagles soaring upward on wings. They will walk and run without getting tired. Good morning. Okay. Our New Testament reading this morning is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23, and you can find that on page 1392 in your pew Bible. I don't have any reason to brag about preaching the good news. Preaching is something God told me to do, and if I don't do it, I am doomed. If I preach because I want to, I will be paid. But even if I don't want to, it is still something God has sent me to do. What? What pay am I given? It is the chance to preach the good news free of charge and not to use the privileges that are mine because I am a preacher. I am not anyone's slave, but I have become a slave to everyone so that I can win as many people as possible. When I'm with the Jews, I live like a Jew to win Jews. They are ruled by the law of Moses, and I am not, but I live by the law to win them. And when I am with people who are not ruled by the law, I forget about the law to win them. Of course, I never really forget about the law of God. In fact, I am ruled by the law of Christ. When I am with people whose faith is weak, I live as they do to win them. I do everything I can to win everyone I possibly can. I do all this for the good news because I want to share in its blessings. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, at this time in your Methodist hymnal, page 859, we're going to do our responsive reading, and you may rise if you're able. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Who covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow upon the hills. The Lord gives to the beasts their food, and to the young ravens that are The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the able, and those who go in the Lord's stead as well.
Thank you. Please be seated. I just got a text from Lieutenant Latte. Um, please, uh, I got to explain this, can I? Because I've got so many visitors here. All right. I got to explain who Lieutenant Latte is. You see, back during the pandemic, we were broadcasting the service into the parking lot with an FM transmitter. One little boy jumped up in the back of his dad's truck when I came around. I had a fishnet for the collection. And, then, and when I went around, this boy jumped up in the back of his dad's truck holding up a Wawa coffee cup holder that holds four coffee cups. And he had it on his face like a mask. So my mind is not like anybody else's here. I could almost guarantee that. And I said, are you Captain Coffee Cup? Can I be your sidekick lieutenant latte and that's how this started i've tried to stop this three times but you'll see people are buying shirts t-shirts with that coffee mugs um hats uh, it's just it just I, I every time i try to end it it comes back so please now you understand where it's coming from this is a something that we started online just to bring Sunday school to the children but now it's turned into our children's message here we go and he just texted me and he's got a news flap this is Lieutenant Lockett. Hold on a second. We got no video, Jim. Video. We got sound. No Here we go. Now we got it. Ash. Hello, everyone. This is Lieutenant Latte with the news flash. And this is just in, here's a picture of why Colonel K-Cup can't help us today. Hold on a second, here he is. So there you have it, Colonel K-Cup has officially started early preschool. You know, so now I don't have him around to help. I'm looking for Pastor Tom, but Pastor Tom's busy. I think he got a new fish tank or something, like he needs another one of those, I don't know. So he's he's off busy. So I left me all by myself. I was feeling kind of low and lonely. And just didn't have nothing to do, so I found some raisins. And I was hoping that maybe I just kind of put these raisins out. This is how I was feeling, like these raisins. Do something. Come on, raisins, do something. They weren't doing anything, just like me. I was real upset. Everybody was doing things. I didn't do anything. But maybe that's what my problem was. You see, I started reading the Bible, and Jesus said, everyone who hears my words and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Do you hear that? We just don't have to hear God's word or read God's word. We have to do God's word. James wrote and he was, and he said, be doers of the word and not mere, not just hearers. And because if you are, you're just deceiving yourself. You're not being a real Christian until you do God's word. And so, Here's what I did. I went and I found some of God's word. And we're going to take some God's word. We're going to add it to these raisins. Here we go. Let's get a little more. Okay. Now we're going to take these raisins and add them to God's word. And let's see what happens. All they're doing is sinking. Um, that's not good. Oh, wait a minute. It moved. Oh, there goes, there goes one. Oh, they're moving. God's word is alive and active. God's word should make us do things. Check that out. Can you see these things going up and down? It is so cool. Check this out. Let me see. Come on. There goes one. There goes another. Ah, there we go. God's word is alive and active. So when I stopped feeling sorry for myself and I started reading God's word and I started doing God's word, I'm excited because this video is doing God's word. I'm telling you, 
about what the Bible says, and it makes us move, and it makes us active. That is really neat. I didn't think it would work. So get yourself a little bit of God's Word. I mean, I mean the Bible, not, not soda. And God's Word should make us become active and move around and do things. Thank you all for watching. God bless. Bye-bye. Or are we going to go do God's word? So, I don't know. Sorry, folks. I don't know where this stuff comes from. <laughs> it, just, it just comes. All right. So, our scripture reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as Jesus left the meeting place with James and John, and they went to the home of Simon and Andrew, when they got there, Jesus told Jesus was told that Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever. Jesus went to her. He took hold of her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she served them a meal. That evening after sunset, all who were sick or had demons in them were brought to Jesus. In fact, the whole town gathered around the door of the house, and Jesus held all uh, Jesus healed all kinds of terrible diseases and forced out a lot of demons. But the demons knew who he was, and he did not let them speak. And very early the next morning, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone and pray. Simon and the others started looking for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus replied, we must go to the nearby towns so that I could tell the good news to those people. This is why I have come. Then Jesus went to the, uh, Jesus went to Jewish meeting places everywhere in Galilee, where he preached and forced out demons. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our fortress. Amen. So today, I want to preach about someone I don't think I've ever really preached about in a sermon, and that was uh, who Mark identified as Simon's mother-in-law. Uh, Mark recorded that she was in in bed with a fever. I don't know. I think we've all had a fever at one time or another. I, I don't think I've ever instantly wanted to get up from a fever, but she did. Um, there must have been a reason why. You know, and as I was thinking about fevers and all that, it brings us back to, I remember when we would have to walk in a store and somebody would have to scan your forehead. Uh, we just came through COVID-19. Some people who had the virus said they've never felt so sick in their lives. But um, the pandemic definitely changed the way we did things. It changed the way we met. Uh, it changed the way people work. It changed the way the children went to school. Uh, I can remember stickers on the floor for your six foot of spacing between people. And, and who could forget that of all things, there was no toilet paper on the shelves. Okay. Really, not something we saw coming. And we had to adjust to a new way of living. And for some people, their priorities in life changed. I remember my older sister, uh, we were talking on the phone. And she said, I never realized how much money I was wasting because every morning I'd go to Starbucks. <laughs> Sorry, Starbucks. <laughs> but uh, she said, now, now that I stopped going there, I realized I don't need this. And now I have so much more money. I never realized how much I was spending. Um. And then uh, I just want to say how serious this fever that Simon's mother-in-law had. 
This was very serious at a time when there were no drugs, uh, no uh, antibiotics. There was a, it was to have a fever was a serious thing. All you could do is wait it out. Even 300 years ago, this this just blows my mind. I want to explain to you what it was like even 300 years ago just to to be sick or to have a fever. John Wesley was one was the first leader of the Methodist movement. He was born in 1703, just over 300 years ago. He was one of 19 children that his mother had. Um, and at that time, it wasn't even uh, a, a lot of mothers, uh, men, men, not a lot, but let's say many, died during childbirth. So to have 19 children, that's just amazing to me. But what's more amazing to me is that her and her husband were so grateful to God because 10 of them lived past infancy. She had nine children die at infancy. This is what, so when we look at Simon's mother-in-law and we see that she has had a fever, we need to remember what a serious event this was in her life. You can't just take two Tylenol back then. And Jesus walks over and lifts up Simon's mother-in-law. And immediately her fever's gone, and she sets to work serving the guests in her house. This is the power of Jesus at work. Uh, we have to, we've just heard about the miraculous power of God at work in Simon's mother-in-law's life. And now... What can we do to apply these verses to us today? The pandemic was a feverish time, and we are now emerging from it. And some say there's never been a better time to share Jesus with others. I remember in my own life when there was a time when my heart was sick with sin. But the moment I asked for forgiveness and the moment I made Jesus the first priority in my life, I was like Simon's mother-in-law because I got up off my knees and instantly started serving Jesus, and I have never stopped. I know those closest to me were very skeptical of my uh, change in my life, the transformation that Jesus was doing in my life. I can remember my father saying to me that I was just a little too religious at times. <laughs> Watch yourself, son. You're getting too religious. But the Holy Spirit touched my father's heart in the same way. And from that day on, every day, he lived his life active and serving God. When we are touched by the Holy Spirit's our lives and our priorities are changed, just like the pandemic changed our lives. The difference is not all the changes in the pandemic were for the better. But we, when we allow Jesus to touch our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are like Simon's mother-in-law. We can get up and we can serve. Um, one time there was a young person that was, I was speaking to, and she said, all that I feel like I'm doing is checking off boxes. I wake up in the morning, I pray, check a box. I read some of the Bible, I check the box. She felt that all her life, she was just, in her, in her time, in that moment of her life, she just felt like she was going through motions and checking off boxes. But there was something she was missing. And that was the greatest commandment that Jesus gave to us. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What does that mean? What does love really look like? For me, uh, with my life, I love my wife. Uh, sometimes she does leave me a checklist. <laughs> But I've never seen a list on how to love me. We know how to love. And we need to love God the same way. Uh, when I gave her my heart, I've done everything I could to bring her joy and not disappointment. When I gave my heart to Jesus, 
I didn't go to church because I needed to check off a box. I went to church to be surrounded by others who were praising God. I want to praise God. No checklists, just a desire to repay the love that he has given to me every day. And the Holy Spirit is calling today. The Holy Spirit is calling all of us and saying, do you love me? What is your answer? Are you too busy to spend time with God each and every day? Are you unwilling to repent? Right here, right now, let us prepare to meet Jesus this communion Sunday. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you have done in our lives. Each breath that we take is a gift from you. Each day that we enjoy is a gift from you. Father, help us to open our hearts wide to you and to your Spirit's calling. Lift us up, Father. Strengthen us and encourage us each and every day. And we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 664, sent forth by God's blessing. And go forth in peace in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.